Individuals here in the pit area who need no introduction to the Seattle area. Billy Shoemaker, driver of the Pride of Pay and Pack, and his crew chief, Jim Laceros. And Billy, your boat certainly is due for a win. Well, I'm, I don't think there's any question about that. We're all eager, and, and everyone in the company is eager, and we hope that we can uh, last all three heats uh, in Seattle here like we didn't in, in Pasco. But if it performs as well as it did there, we're all going to be real happy. Well, that 112 plus uh, mile per hour qualifying speed in Pasco certainly didn't hurt you any, but then the boat put together two beautiful heat victories in the preliminaries, and then all of a sudden, nothing. Well, it's one of those things. Sometimes you run into an engine that might have a, a flaw in, a, in the uh, rods or something that you can't detect, and it just let loose a little earlier than what we had expected, but that's the uh, brakes of racing, and unfortunately, it happened to us in the final heat in Pasco. And of course, Jim Lucero, the man responsible for putting together engines for the pay and pack team. And uh, Jim, what's your explanation of just coming so close and then not quite making it? Well, there's really no explanation we can offer. Uh, we, we decided to change the engines for the final heat there based on what we knew about both engines. And, uh, you know, it just, it just happened. You know, it was uh, running well when we put it in and all of a sudden it wasn't running well. Well, everybody sort of stood on edge at Miami when Billy Shoemaker took his first bath in an unlimited hydroplane. And Billy, uh, of course, uh, you haven't driven any different than you had before that. It doesn't seem to affect you any at all. Well, it might have afterwards because I was so stiff and sore from it, and especially in the neck area where your head gets tossed around from driving these things. Well, Jim, what changes, if any, have been made to the pay and pack to uh, convert to this three-mile course as opposed to the two-and-a-half-mile course you've been used to running on most of the year? We really haven't made any basic changes. We're going to try a couple of different propellers and maybe a little different engine combination, but that's about all. There's not really too much we can do to the boat right now. There's been some controversy over the fan plan, which is the format that we'll be running uh, on Sunday for this, the Seafair Trophy Race. What uh, are your opinions as a crew chief and a driver as to the fan plan format to run your boat under? Either of you. Jim? I like it myself. Uh, I've always been in favor of the, the fastest boat go out there and run hard and win. Uh, I don't like this business of boat being able to go out and maybe back into a couple of heat victories and then have to take a fourth or a fifth in the final heat and win the race. Have to, I believe you should have to go out and run hard in the final and win the race. The only unfortunate thing that I see in it at all is the fact that our sport may be plagued with some drivers that would sandbag it. Uh, I don't really think that, that too many of them will because of the national championship is at stake and uh, even though I'm not in contention I know that I'm going to try and win every heat that I that I get into and hopefully the rest of the fellows will feel the same way so we can put on a good show for the people. Billy Shoemaker and Jim Laceros, the Pay and Pack team hungry for a win. Dave Harrisburger, the major Duomo of the Pay and Pack stores, probably got more routers going for his boat than any boat here in Lake Washington. Dave, over a period of years you've had probably some of the most exciting teams uh, you've put together as far as crew and drivers are concerned uh, in the history of racing. Just what makes this one so doggone good? Well, it's, we're not that good yet. We haven't broke the record. We haven't, we haven't beat your time yet, but uh, I think I've got a good, young, aggressive crew that isn't afraid to try a few experimental things, and uh, uh, we're going to go out again today a little later and try to push the speed up and get past you, because uh, we want to be number one. I'm sure you do too, but we're going to give you a good go. Dave, you came here, I think, and I, I, let's, let's let it all hang out. I think you came here design, with designs on trying to break that record. Uh, considering the competition you've been in and the qualifying that you've done uh, throughout the country, what made you think that you, maybe you could turn 120 or 21 here? Well, we, we run 118, practically 119 in Detroit, and we're the fastest in the fan plan there, the fastest qualifying time. And last two weeks ago in Pasco, we broke the record by about a mile and a half an hour. So uh, I think the boat's got the capability. It, uh, we run 120 miles an hour here in my old boat, the Eagle Electric, with Colonel Gardner, and uh, uh, I think this boat's probably just about as fast. Maybe not as fast in the straightaways, but it goes through the corners a little better. Now, honestly, as an owner, in all sincerity, and we won't tell a soul, what do you do to pump up a crew and pump up a driver to get that extra two miles an hour? Well, we've got the engine in there that we went fast in Pasco and Detroit in there right now, and 
we've got a different wheel we're going to try and uh, we're going to put everything in there and clean up the spark plugs and really go for the money and uh, there's there's some money out there today and the crew gets a lot of that money and uh, I, I think they like the money also certainly no, a, no, another one of those teams that if you're ever able to beat them it's not going to be very easy And there comes Bill Monty taking the green flag first. 
And now Terry Sherrod seeing that green flag is like waving a red flag in front of a bull, and Terry Sherrod starts to move. He's moved it up to about 20 yards. He's got 20 yards to go to make up on this last lap. Can he do it? Well, I don't know. They got a boat right up there that's going to hold him up. It's a lap behind. Here they go into the turn. And swing into the turn as they go around the turn. Once he's around first, starts on the outside, gone the wrong way around, but he's got his foot in it right and hard. They're going around there now almost like one boat. There's one boat out in front of him about 25 yards, but that is a boat that's a lap behind him. And now the two leaders are running number two and three going down that back stretch for the first boat is a lap behind. Don't pay attention to that first boat that's gone by. In the spray are Billy Stewart and Bill Muncy. Billy Sturrett is taking over the lead as he goes down into the lower turn. Here we go. Sturrett is first. Atlas Van Line's going around on the outside, and it looks like Bill Muncy is not going to make it a half a dozen times. All right, here comes young Billy Sturrett, a chip off the old block out there in pride, pay and pack, coming up here now to take the checkered flag, the emblem of victory that you see hanging out here on the Potomac, and youth must be served, and it's Billy Sturrett coming up here to take it in the boat named Pride of Pay and Pack. There he is over the line. Muncie by about 150 to 175 yards in the boat Atlas Van Line. So first is Pay and Pack, second Atlas Van Line. Well, the water we thought was a little bit too smooth to run very fast. We got out there and uh, the water, like I say, is real smooth and it took a lot of horsepower to, to pull the boat and uh, I didn't have any idea I was running near the record. And uh, with this smooth water like this, we can't uh, run near as fast on top end because the boat glues down and we have a little more trouble in the corner. The, the boat just, just stays too tight to the water. But right now the water is too smooth to try to run very fast. Although we did run over the record, we weren't expecting to. We're hoping that the water will rough up a little bit either this afternoon or maybe tomorrow where we can go out and, and try to take the record up. What does this mean? The Pay and Pack is really running uh, pretty good. Yes, it is. Uh, the Pay and Pack is a fabulous boat. I've never been anything that it rolled like this boat does. It, it really does get through the corner well. Now, you took a little nick on the wheel back there. What was that all about? We have no idea. That was one of our better wheels, and when we came back in and lifted it out of the water, we had part of one of the propeller blades going. So right now we're minus one wheel. What are you going to predict as far as uh, when the time trials do start uh, tomorrow, your time? What are you going to shoot for? Well, if, if we can get the right combination in, we like I said, we did lose one of our better wheels. If we can get the right combination in and the water gets right, we're hoping to run somewhere around 125.